Shalom. Shalom, like hello in a different language. I don't know. I've always heard it and never knew what it meant <laughs> and used it to say hello. Okay, how are we doing today? Hello, hello, hello. It's fucking cold. Okay. I never wear sweaters in my house and I am so cold that I cannot get my life together today. Who's with me? Am I just a pansy? So I'm going to warn you guys. I have a sick child at home with me today. And I have never, well, maybe one other time I did a live with kids here. I can't remember. Um, but I only have one of them. It's my little boy, Ledger. And uh, he's coloring at the moment. But I'm just warning you that that is going on. I swear we cannot catch up. Like, one minute it's strep, the next minute it's the stomach flu, then it's COVID, then it's a cold. It's never ending. How is everybody doing today? Hi, Lily. Hi, Kim. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, hello, hello. Ooh, some interesting cards popping out today, yo. So, the letter we're going to do today is B. Hi, Belinda. How funny is that? She just popped right up. Belinda with a B. Um, so, if you have the letter B in your name uh, at the beginning or the end, or if um, the, the letter B is a part of whatever situation it is that you're looking to get some guidance or clarity on, then um, you get a special card today, okay? So just keep that in mind. Hi, Jen. Hi, Erica. Thanks for coming to the show, Erica. Hi, Patty. Oh, we need all kinds of crap here. I love that. Okay. So I have pulled all the cards for one, two, three, and then our B initial. But I had one just pop out, one extra. So I'm going to make that like our theme. Hi, Lois. Um, so... Our theme today is freedom. You always have a choice. Keep that in mind. Everybody. That applies to everybody. Okay? You always have a choice. So I'm going to show you uh, your cards, one, two, or three, and uh, give you a couple updates, and then we will, um, we will give you those cards. Okay. So this is one. One. One, this is two, let me fix that. This is two, and this is three. So we've got one, two, three. These are from the fairy deck and the angel deck. One, two, and three. Make sure you put your choices in the comments. Are you picking one, two, or three? Don Wells Hacker picked two. Charity picked two. Hello, Charity. Hello again, Miss Erica. Hi, Marion. Sheila Scholl, she picked number one. One, two, or three. I'll hold these up here for a minute. And remember, if you're just now joining us, if you have the initial B in your first or last name, first or last initial, um, I have special cards for you. So no need to, to put your, uh, your choice down. I will show you your special cards. All right, one more time. One, two, three. So whichever one you feel is resonating with you the most. Okay. And then the initial Bs, you got not one, not two, but three cards. And I swear I didn't do that because B is my initial and it's my favorite initial. I swear. Hi, Barb. Barb, you have special cards today, so don't pick one, two, or three. Anybody with a B, okay? Um, but I will tell you that these cards are super cool for the, for the Bs. So uh, interesting message there. 
Okay, so if you are, do I have anybody on here right now from the Kansas City area? If you are from the Kansas City area, um, the next show I have coming up is in Chilla Coffee. I get a lot of requests and questions about when is the next time that we're going to be coming to Kansas City. I um, would really like to find a theater style setting for my Kansas City shows, and I'm kind of struggling with that. So um, Chilla Coffee is the closest that we are right now until I can find um, a venue that I like that has more of a theater style setting, we're going to continue to probably do events in Chillicothe, which is going to be the closest to you. So um, last event of the year is going for Chillicothe is going to be the 26th, which is not this weekend, but next weekend. So I hope that you can join us. Hi, Tina B. Hi, Kim. Concordia, Missouri. Man, I'm trying to think of, I think that's, that's a, there's some famous Christian schools from there, I think, if I remember right. Um, Anya, I have contacted the Uptown Theater. They are actually my first choice and pick, and I haven't gotten a call back yet. So um, I'm kind of waiting, playing the waiting game, but I really want to come back to Kansas City. I really do. I just want to make sure that I get the uh, event venue correct because um, the energy within a venue can really throw me off. And I've had um, several venues over the last however many years where we show up and I'm like, this sucks. And I can feel it and I hate it. Sometimes there's a lot of negative energy there. Um, it's just, it's, I'm a, I guess I'm a venue junkie. It just has to be just right. So you can call me a diva, but uh, that is what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, it's three hours away, or wait, coffee is on. Yeah, Lily, Chili Coffee is only an hour, a little over an hour away from Kansas City. So uh, maybe you can make that. Okay, let's get to the whole reason that you're here. Um, okay, so card number one. I'll show this to you. You can kind of see it. Look at that, it's so cute and how appropriate. Prince of Winter. Uh, okay, so this is all about, I'm looking at the picture right now to see if anything pops out to me. Any good uh, tarot reader would do that before they actually read what the bottom says. And so right now what I'm basically doing is I'm using my intuition to see if anything pops out at me, just the picture in general. Uh, and then after that I go down to reading. Um, this card kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety. It's like we need to make a decision quick and we need to do it right now. You need to stop um, procrastinating. Maybe you aren't procrastinating at all and you don't realize that this is like uh, a decision you need to make quickly. But this card uh, really makes me feel like there's going to be some sudden and unexpected changes or, um, you know, maybe it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. And when it does, just be aware and be prepared to go ahead and make it make a choice. Um, there's there's a there's an intellectual decision to make here um and i know that you think well making an intellectual uh thought out um decision and and making a decision quickly can't be done but it can so i want you to exhaust all of your resources before you make this decision but do that quickly okay so um i feel like this has a little bit to do with possible travel or um movement, moving in general, whether it be moving from one company to another or actually moving from one town or city to another uh, state, something along those lines. But I just feel a lot of movement with this card. And um, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. With this coming up uh, as the Prince of Winter, I think that this decision um, is a decision that's uh, supposed to be made at this point in time. So that's another reason why I feel like you are on the right path, right? Uh, you get this message and you get it in uh, in the midst of snow. I don't know if it's snowing where you're at, but it's snowing where we are just a little bit. So anyways, um, sometimes it's okay to be a little impulsive. I will tell you that. That's something that I, I want to say with card number one, too. Okay, card number two. I did not tell you this, but... Uh, card number two, I actually had what's called a jumper. And so you get a bonus card, not one, but two cards. But the interesting thing about the, the card that was a jumper for the ones that picked number two is um, the first card you got was the six of air, okay? And this card is all about the end of a difficult situation, things starting to look up for you, um, 
you know, you might be at the end of a phase and be like, oh my God, is this ever going to end? Um, the other thing that six of air can also mean is that you're going to be taking a trip or that uh, if you're trying to decide if you should take this trip or not, the answer is yes. Yes, you should take the trip. Um, but the second card that came up with that was um, the spiritual transformation card. It's also known as it's the release card. Okay. So here we are getting this message of we're at the end of this negative situation or uh, this situation where things have kind of been sticky and sucked. And uh, then we, we're walking into the spiritual side of things. So it could be that what you just went through uh, happened in order to assist you on your spiritual journey or spiritual transformation. Um, so keep that in mind too. Or maybe you... And I'm just throwing things out here, okay? But let's say uh, you just had surgery three or four weeks ago and you're on the mend finally. Maybe it was on your knee and you're finally starting to be able to walk. Um, but during that three or four weeks that you were off from work, uh, that you were being waited on hand and foot, hopefully, um, you may have had some sort of spiritual transformation at that point. Uh, maybe a spiritual awakening in general. And this is your guide's way of confirming for you that that was supposed to happen when it did. You are on the right path. Don't sit here and think that you're going crazy. Um, yeah, just know that it's it's time to move on from the negativity or uh, the stressful frustration situa situation that you were in before. And um, yeah, you are moving into brighter days. And, and hopefully you're moving into your own spiritual path because that's super, super important. Um, some people don't, don't figure out where they stand spiritually uh, until they're in their 60s and 70s, and that's just fine. Some people don't find out until later. But um, I really think that it's this gorgeous, intimate, um, beautiful journey and, and I think that the sooner that you can begin it, the better. But it's kind of just like weight loss. You can't force it. It has to, you, you lose the weight when it's time. And, and uh, the same thing for your spiritual uh, journey. So if you haven't started it yet, um, think about it. Okay, but I think you already have, because you're here. So card number three, if you picked number three, interestingly enough, this is the princess of winter. The first one was the Prince of Winter. Number three is the Princess of Winter. Um, this card is all about getting a message or hearing something that wasn't necessarily easy to hear. And you may not have wanted to hear it, and you may still be thinking in your mind, that was delivered so tactlessly, or uh, that could have been given to me a different way. But the way in which it was given to you was exactly how you were supposed to receive it. Um, this could also have to do, and I'll show you the card. Some people like to see it. This could also have to do uh, somewhat with a child who has some abilities. Abilities kind of like mine. Not necessarily one way or the other, just uh, whether it be psychic or medium or both. Um, so if you have a child that's kind of dealing with that, uh, I want to go ahead and tell you, um, the first thing that I want you to do is what, whatever you do, do not get excited when they tell you, I saw this, or I saw, you know, a guy named Jimmy in my room, or there's a old woman at the end of the steps. Try to take that information, um, and just act like it's mundane, because when you get excited about that, the next thing that's going to happen is something, depending on how old the child is, um, we're talking like four and over, but, uh, they're going to realize, oh my gosh, this is fun. When I tell them this, they get excited and I get a reaction and that's exactly what I want. So um, if this card does happen to uh, coincide with you having a child that um, could have some of the same abilities as me, there's a little bit of information for you on what to do next. Just listen to them. As long as something isn't happening physical to them, scratching, um, you know, whatever, they're going to be scared. Being scared is completely normal but um, they should not be touched, okay? Uh, and I get messages weekly on my child is seeing this or my child is seeing that, what do I do? As long as they're not being hurt, everything's fine. It's completely normal. How you go about it is your own, you know, it's based on your own preference. You can um, try to nurture that. You can try to shut it down. Of course, I wouldn't suggest shutting it down, but 
um, nurturing it. You just listen, get, maybe get some books on um, seeing spirit as a child. There's a great show called uh, Psychic Kids with Chip Coffee. Um, that might be something interesting to watch. So yeah, there's some, some information there. Um, okay. One of the things that I'm picking up with this card as I read it um, is if there is a person that's given you information uh, or an answer or something like that that didn't feel good, um, that kind of caught you off guard or pissed you off, um, I feel like they are coming at you just speaking the truth with kindness. So I want you to think twice about writing them off. Um, I know I'm the kind of person that when somebody pisses me off, I'm usually like, Boop, see you later. I want nothing to do with you ever again. Um, in this particular situation, I kind of feel like uh, you should possibly consider not being angry with them. Now, and I try to tell you guys this all the time, and sometimes I forget. These cards are, they, they can pertain to your past, your present, or your future. But uh, if they resonate with you, it's a really good indicator that you're on the right path in general. Okay? So whether this happened to you before, it, it's happening to you right now, or it's going to happen to you in the future and it hasn't happened yet, just keep the advice that I'm giving you um, in the back of your pocket. Okay. So, hello, hello. Oh, good. I'm glad, Leah. Why don't you explain for us how that made sense? How did that, uh, Leah Burton, how did that number three pertain to you? Okay. Hi, Susan. All right. Hello, Sam. So if you have the Susan, this is for you. You have the initial B. If you have an initial B, uh, these next cards are for you. And like I said, we had, I'll, well, I'll just tell you, I was getting ready to read from the angel answers card, that deck and tucked inside that deck as I was, um, flipping them around and, you know, doing everything that I do, shuffling them, I found this teeny tiny one. And it was, it, you can tell the difference, but it was inside the middle of this deck. So that told me I had to, to bring that out to you. So uh, I don't even know where to start with these three cards because there's a lot going on here. Hi, Stephanie. Um, okay. So the first card that I pulled is the seal, okay? And this card is all about immersing yourself in artistic and creative expression. How I read this card, um, it's also known as the imagination card. How I read this card is I associate it with manifestation, okay? So um, if you're trying to manifest, and I'm just going to use myself as, um, as a um, reference, but this could have to do with your love life, a new career, a friends in general, um, just really anything. It could have to do with the big screen TV if you're trying to manifest that. I don't know. But um, getting the seal card, getting the imagination card is telling me, first of all, uh, one of the first rules of, of um, manifestation is visualization. And so that's right there where I am having problems uh, manifesting what it is that I want. I am trying to manifest a home, a happy, uh, big, uh, a home that, that just seems like it more than um, more than a rental or you know whatever um, my my kids and I have kind of moved from house to house every two or three years since they were born and um, I would really really like to eventually find that that dream home and there's just absolutely nothing on the market within my price range and um, yeah so I've, I've kind of just given up for a minute and I'm walking away from it well, today I pull this card and it's talking about imagination and immersing yourself in what you want. That's one thing I haven't been able to do is visualize what type of home I actually want. I want all kinds of shit. I want arched windows and I want to, you know, I want it all. And uh, I just have a hard time visualizing exactly what it is that I want because in my mind I'm telling myself, well, I don't want to um, cut myself off. There could be the perfect home out there, and because I've uh, made it so, um, you know, meticulous and specific, uh, I'm, I'm losing out on finding a home that would work just fine. You can't do that. And as a manifestation teacher, you think I would know this, right? But 
that's one of the biggest issues I've been having. So if you picked cards number three, we're only on card one of card number th card number three or letter B, I'm sorry. Um, one of the biggest things that you need to consider doing is visualizing what it is that you want specifically. And the best way to do that is to write it down. Write down exactly what you want, okay? Here's the other thing. Um, this is a big one, and I hope that it doesn't scare anybody off. But this is the card that I pulled out um, second for bees, and it's just a big N-O. So the way that I take that is now is not the time. Now isn't the time to move. Now isn't the time to, uh, to change up what you're doing. Stay where you're at. Be patient and let us, let us work for you. That's kind of what I feel like um, that, that uh, hi, Grammy. That's kind of what I feel like that card is saying. Just be patient and, and hang out with us. And so when we put those two together and we're thinking about, okay, what is it that I want? Is it that relationship? Is it that, um, you know, that house, that job, the dream job? It makes so much sense. Cool your shit, sit down, write out what you want, and visualize exactly what you want. Until you do that, you're not going to get it. So um, that was very interesting with what I have going on personally. I don't know what you have going on personally, but I want, I want to leave that there. Okay, and then the last final card for letter Bs um, was the messenger of abundance. And this was the one, this was actually the first one, but this was the one that popped out at me uh, that was in, in between this deck right here. It was like, you know, uh, okay. So anyways, it was inside there. Uh, and I felt like it was a big deal. This is all about um, making your dreams come true career-wise. So um, whether that be wonderful news regarding, uh, <laughs> it's hard not to, um, it's hard not to use my own uh, information or my own situations, uh, being a letter B at, and talk about other things. Um, the way that I read it is that uh, your career is getting ready to set you up for something bigger. So allow that career situation to take off in whatever area it's supposed to take off. And then you'll end up being able to get what you're trying to manifest. So first, let's focus on manifesting what it is that we want. Okay. Number one, visualization. Number two, feeling. You have to feel like you deserve it. If you don't feel like you deserve it, the universe won't serve it. So you have to feel like you deserve it. Um, so yeah, if you could get, if you could get an idea of exactly what you want, get it down on paper, begin to visualize it, keep that in your mind, and then literally let it float away. And then focus on your career, which is, um, and it may not be your career, maybe you're a stay at home mom, focus on that hobby, focus on whatever it is that you're doing with your children. You don't have to have a job for the messenger of abundance to make sense because this is all about abundance in general. And whether you're seeking financial abundance or you're seeking abundance of love, um, any, anything, abundance of information, abundance of skills, uh, abundance of appreciation from your family, whatever it is. Like I said, you don't have to have a job for the messenger of abundance to apply to you. So keep that in mind. So yeah, that was confusing. Did anybody get that? Okay, a um, lot going on there for the bees. How uh, appropriate, right? Okay, um, oh, hi Cindy. Corey is with you every single day. You know he's chilling in heaven. Chilling in heaven. Amy, I know I do that same thing. I believe it, you're a Gemini, I get it. Move to Columbia. I got you, girl. Oh, Danielle, you are so sweet. Um, you know, if I move anywhere, it's going to be somewhere warm because this weather sucks. But probably won't be going anywhere for a long time. Uh, okay, my four-year-old grandson keeps talking about the black guys with no face that comes into his room at night. He sees so much. Okay, Leah, he's probably seeing, um, and I've talked about this many times, but he's probably seeing um, shadow people, and they are terrifying. And I am a huge advocate for children who struggle with seeing these particular types of energies in general because they are terrifying. And um, most of the time, parents don't have any idea what it is that they're experiencing. When they say something like, I, I don't see a face, 
we tend to think negative and dark. And um, I can tell you, I've never met a um, a bad shadow person, but they are the only ones that have scared the shit out of me. And I think that it's just the idea that they don't have a face and that all you can see is an outline. Um, they they were really heavy. I don't know how old he is, but for me, they were really heavy uh, around my uh, preteen and early teen years. So, um, you know, but everybody experiences it differently. So you just, you really never know um, how he's seeing them. The only time I would get a little bit nervous is when I hear things like red eyes or um, they talk to me, they said they're going to do something bad to me, those types of things. And in that situation, I would get a, a priest and shut it down. Um, but yeah, if he's just seeing um, regular shadow people, there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with that. And um, as terrifying as it is, it's completely normal, believe it or not. Let him sleep with you, please. I couldn't sleep with my parents. They didn't have a clue what was going on. But, oh, I mean, I remember laying in my bed for hours. I'm talking like 9 o'clock to sun up and being terrified. I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't move. I was terrified to do anything. Half the time I couldn't even scream because I was so scared uh, of what would happen. So just have a little bit of empathy. And I'm sure you do, Leah. I'm sure you do. If you're on here... Uh, you are taking steps to make sure that uh, that you know what's going on with him. So, okay. Hi, Brittany. Hello. Okay. Let's see. All right. Yeah. If you if you don't think you deserve it, the universe won't serve it. That's absolutely right, Natalia. You got that. Um, Susan, a lot of activity in your house lately. Try sage. That's always my go-to if it bothers you. If it doesn't, I literally just had this conversation with a friend of mine. <laughs> if it doesn't bother you and it doesn't feel threatening, chances are they're literally like, ah, our family. You know, they, they look at you and they try to interact with you. They, um, you moved into their home, if that's what it is. If, if spirit um, that's in your home is, is attached to your home or still in your home, you moved into their home. Uh, unless this is somebody that you brought with you from a previous home that you're aware of or a loved one. And in that case, um, well, in both cases, just create dialogue. Talk to them. Hey, this is freaking me out. Or I'm stressed out about the activity that's going on here. Chill. Um, and, you know, it's always a good idea to smudge. I smudge like once a week my whole house. And then I try to smudge myself every time before I go somewhere uh, and do something. So keep that in mind, too. That can that can um, get rid of it most negative energy and that's what you want to do once you've smudged if it's still going on at least you know it's not negative um unless of course your house needs an exorcism and then you need a priest okay i am gonna hop off here i am so proud of my little guy he was quiet the whole time holy smokes i'm gonna go get my daughter and uh yeah that's that so I am not for sure if I will have a live next week. I'm going to see if I can get a sitter for the kids. My, my son's pretty good about um, letting me do a live. My daughter, on the other hand, would try to take it all over. So um, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get a sitter so that I can um, uh, get in here on Wednesday of next week. But if not, we'll meet back the following Wednesday, okay? I love you guys so much. You rock. Have a wonderful and a happy weekend. See you later.